Welcome to another episode of The Cancer Informant. Today, we're going to answer some of the questions from our viewers and listeners. The first question comes from Mary in the UK. Mary writes, Hi, my brother was diagnosed with colon cancer three years ago. He has surgery and chemotherapy. He was given the clear. Sadly, his cancer is metastasis to his lungs, liver, lymph node, and pancreas. The doctor says he does not have any more treatment options for him. He appears fit and well, just tiredness and poor appetite. I am wondering if there are any clinical trials available. He is just 42. Well, Mary, I'm very sorry to hear about your brother. He is young, and it sounds like he has a rapidly progressing cancer that began in the colon. Now, it's important to know about the molecular phenotype of a cancer, that when we see a cancer in a young person like your brother, it brings to mind the possibility that this could be an inherited cancer, which means that there could be genes that run in the family that drive this cancer. An important syndrome to think about is the Lynch syndrome. Now, Lynch syndrome, there's an inherited mutation in DNA repair proteins that can lead to a condition called microsatellite instability. This condition is also called hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, or HNPCC. In families, we will frequently see one or more members of the family developing this type of cancer at a young age, uh, generally before the ages of 50 or 40, or sometimes even younger than that. We see it in two successive generations, meaning it could be in the grandparents and the parents, or in first-degree siblings, so brothers, sisters, aunts, or uncles. A pattern of cancer like this, with um, multiple cancers in the same individual, onset at a young age, and striking multiple members of the same family is a strong indicator that a hereditary gene is likely at work. For your brother, the first thing that's important is that he get a, a very detailed molecular workup of the tumors. We now know that cancers have many different molecular drivers. For example, in colon cancer, there can be mutations in the KRAS gene. There can be genomic instability, microsatellite instability, there can be tumor mutational burden. There can be other factors, uh, fusions of certain genes, such as NTREC and others. We're also learning that colon cancer may have BRAF mutations, HER2 mutations, and other factors. The thing, if your tumor does have some of these molecular drivers, there are actually treatments and clinical trials now open. A good place to look for clinical trials is clinicaltrials.gov. And there's a search engine there where you can type in the type of cancer or uh, this particular molecular features. But obviously, it's best to consult with a doctor or other expert about what trials or uh, therapeutics or off-label use of therapeutics might be available. There are also some new interesting artificial intelligence and software tools that are available that can help analyze the various molecular mutations in a tumor and potentially select combinations of therapies that can be quite effective. We're also seeing now development of new types of therapy that include vaccines. Making a customized vaccine for a patient can be extremely powerful. To make a customized vaccine, we'd basically need to sequence the tumor, analyze the mutations, and then develop a process to make the vaccine. There are many companies now working on these types of studies. If there isn't tissue available, a good option is liquid biopsy. Liquid biopsy can be done at any time in a patient. Basically, a blood sample is taken, and if the patient has metastatic disease, the circulating tumor cells can be isolated and studied, and also the cell-free DNA can also be isolated and studied as well. The circulating tumor cells give us some information about proteins that are in the cancer, and we can count them to get an idea about how much cancer might be present in a particular patient. Now, in a tumor like colon cancer, we'd probably want to look at markers on the tumor cells, for example, PDL1 or HER2, because these could be possible targets of antibody drug conjugates. So it'll be important to assess that. Now, the molecular features of the cell free DNA are also extremely important. Cell free DNA comes from cancer cells that are leaking or dying, where they leak the DNA into the blood, and we can have a good look at it and see if there are actionable targets. 
In colon cancer, I would be looking for KRAS G12C, for BRAF V600E, for tumor molecular mutational burdens, microsatellite instability, BRCA1 and 2 mutations, and a variety of other mutations that can link a patient to a specific therapy. In summary, a patient with an advanced tumor, a clinical trial is always a very good opportunity. In fact, there are some clinical trials that may not be linked to particular molecular alterations at all. These can be linked to novel types of chemotherapy or radiotherapy where a tumor might be treated with a type of radiation or radiopharmaceuticals. There are often many, many opportunities available for additional treatment. One of the key important aspects is making sure that the tumor is properly analyzed and characterized, and also exploring clinical trials while the patient is still healthy. If the patient is not healthy in terms of being able to walk or be uh, functional, they may not be eligible for a clinical trial as a, a general degree of wellness is needed to enroll. I hope that was useful in terms of uh, your brother. I'm very sorry to hear about his case. I'm hoping that you're working with a team that can identify potential trials or other treatment opportunities for your, your brother. In addition, if you or anyone else is interested in obtaining a personalized consultation, I am available to do that. I would meet with you and review the very detailed history of you or, or your loved one's medical history with appropriate consent, and then help determine if there's appropriate testing done and what treatment opportunities might be available, either a standard treatment, guideline-based treatment, or emerging clinical trials. I hope you found today's episode of the Cancer Informant to be useful, and I will continue to answer other questions in the future. Please feel free to post questions on our website. We look forward to hearing more about your questions and, and to discussing them in future episodes. Thank you again for uh, tuning in to the Cancer Informant, and we look forward to you joining a future episode. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.